Well, good morning, everybody. Got an early start today. It's not even 5 a.m. yet. The power keeps going on and off, and uh, every time it does, things start beeping, and my battery backups go nuts and wakes me up. Anyway, I don't know what's going on, but every time that the power goes off, I hear a loud buzzing on the horizon, like a really loud whop, <laughs> like really obnoxious. And I can count the seconds in between. It sounds like it's, you know, up to up to a mile away, three quarter mile, something like that. Sounds like it's coming from that direction. So before we even get started today, we're probably just going to go take a look, see if we can find what it is. I keep seeing fire trucks buzzing past. And, uh, well, whenever the lights go out, it sure gets, like, really quiet out here, too. It's, it's, I'm hoping it'll happen while I'm on camera. Anyways, we're going to jump into this today. we got some things to work on, such as the headlights. You can see that it was actually recorded previously. But today we're waiting for Kim. We'll try to get some work today done on the front wheels and the bearings and boy I'm not thinking very well because I didn't get a whole lot of sleep <laughs> I keep getting woken up well anyway you know the drill like you like you comment subscribe don't forget to plug the dingle bell you get updates every time I upload a video check out dogshit.net for all my different social media links and uh, well I guess we'll be back right after we figure out what the hell's going on with the power <laughs> thanks for watching guys we'll be right back <laughs> out this morning. Yeah, it looks like Gulf Power is, well, technically FPL now. It's just on time to fix it. As long as it took me to find where the power went out is how long it took for me to respond, so that's pretty fast. But about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes ago, uh, all my fans and everything in the house went out, and I heard a loud whomp kind of sound, and I could count the seconds, and it was roughly, you know, three, four seconds before I heard the whomp from when the power went out, so... Tells me, you know, three quarter mile away, that's about right. And then 30 minutes for you cop show up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, he's not fixing nothing until that car's moved, of course. <laughs> see where it used to be and then he moved it a good you know, 20 feet <laughs> to the left there. Wow. He hit that sucker hard. Well anyway they gotta replace the pole before they ever fix the power. You know, I'll be down for a few hours. It means it's gonna be a little warm in the house. That's okay. Welcome to Florida guys, right? You get used to this kind of thing. <laughs> Alright. Here's our headlight stuff. This is the old bucket that came out of this car. You can tell because some of the paint that oversprayed onto it matches. But these things are just ugly. They're rust holes in them. They just need restoration. So there was no sense in doing that. Instead, we're going to throw them away. We decided to replace them with some good replacement units here. And these are just, I don't know, they're just really nice. Usually there's some crappy galvanized or something that's just going to rust to hell. But these are actually nicely painted. I hadn't seen these before. I don't know what they are. They don't have any good labels on them, but these are some good ones. There'll be links down below in the video description as to where we got them if you need to get a set for yourself. But anyway, we're going to install that on that headlight. And then I went to install the headlight ring because we finished that side and discovered that the headlight rings are plastic and they're all busted to hell. This one, throw that over there, garbage. This one's not much better. See, it's missing a whole bunch of, uh, well, actually, it's not missing. It is here. That one was missing a piece. But this one's still there, but it's all crushed. So this is garbage, too, so we're not putting those back on. But I dug through my scrap pile. Isn't it great that Duckman's got stuff? And I have nice metal ones, not those plastic pieces of crap. So this is going to go back on there. That one's a metal one, too. I should get them set up nicely, and we'll get these suckers installed. Otherwise, we know the headlights work. In addition to that, we also got the two missing screws. These are special screws that have a little shoulder on the tip there that allows you to slot it into the hole to get it started. Now, if you've ever put these headlights on before, you know that they are an extreme pain in the ass because this design is complete bullshit. If this screw were just an inch longer, if this little shoulder that around here were an inch longer, you could very easily locate that hole, then drive it in and, and thread it. Um, 
but this is just dumb. These things are so short that it's practically impossible, and then when you get the hole, you don't know that you have, and it seems like it's starting to thread in, but what's actually happening is it's going next to the hole, to the little tab that's on the bottom here where it's supposed to hit, which, by the way, in this aftermarket headlight bucket, isn't even straight. It's not facing me, it's facing that way. And it's not even facing um, parallel or perpendicular to the ground, rather. It's actually on a slight angle. So I'm gonna have to bend that back, and then I'll probably run a tap through it. There's the tab. And the reason why I know that is because I just got done doing it over here. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this headlight together. And this is an unusual sealed beam that I'm looking at here. I haven't seen one like this before. It has the uh, bulb on the inside that's soldered in. I guess it's not replaceable, but as I said in the previous video, with a soldering iron, you can replace just about anything. But it has an actual lens here that comes off of it. And it looks like it might have been glued on, maybe? It does have kind of like a seal around the lip here. But once we get everything bolted together and coupled in, it should be fine. So let's go ahead and throw that in there, and I'll demonstrate. And we'll see what we come up with today. But anyway, there it goes. Screaming kids, yay. Just what we always wanted. On the back side of this bulb, there's a little tab here, a tab here, and a tab down here. It's got three tabs. And on this bucket, there's only two tabs right here. And these are the ones that are closer together. So that would be the top of the headlight. And they do line up no problem. You got one here and one over there. But the one on the bottom it lines up with nothing. In fact, it looks like they began to notch and did not finish. So what we're going to do is take a pair of tin snips and just cut a little notch in there and then click this thing into place. So that way it gets proper fitment. Alright, this is our assembly all together. We're put our wiring in the back. There we go. This sucker is ready to go in. Now you see there's holes around the edges here. And this is a weird thing because when you put these buckets in, it seems like different years may have had different holes in different places. And aftermarket like this one is, you never know exactly what hole is going to be the correct one. So it's a little bit of a guessing, hit or miss. You try to keep the bulb centered in place, it's really the goal, so let's go ahead and get it in there best we can. It's time for the ring. You notice I took this thing out more than once because why? Because things didn't line up. <laughs> All right, that should get it. Sometimes it's easier to take the top off like this, get the screw started if you can locate the hole. Feels like I did. Yeah, hole's located, and then snap it over the top. This one doesn't want to do it. Usually it'll just click right in. There it goes. And we have a headlight. All right. Let's try them.
one of the things I needed to look at was the brake lights on here. Brake lights were not working. We don't know why. I went and checked all the fuses. I checked for voltage on both sides of the particular fuse that I believe should have been the brake. The only reason I've identified is that is because it happens to have the right color wire that's going to up front. Up front here, however, when I checked the black wire, which is this one right here, I was getting 1.5 volts. So clearly I'm getting voltage, but it's not good voltage. So I started cleaning up all the terminals under here. I cleaned up the terminals on the fuse block. And then I came back over here and I got 12 volts. So if I'm right now, I believe, <laughs> I believe that I will probably have a set of brake lights working. So anyway, I guess it's about time to check it, right? All right, I'm gonna set up the camera because I can't see back here and I don't have a mirror big enough to be able to locate it. So I'll use the camera, which means you guys get to see in real time my experience of whether or not the brakes work. <laughs> Alright, after reviewing the video, it looks like only the lefty was working. I don't know why we don't have a righty. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the lens off of this one. And have a look inside here and make sure the bulb is secured as it's supposed to be. Make sure the wire is on the socket like it's supposed to be. But if one of them is coming on back here, then that means power is going to the rear end for sure. So unless we have a broken connection somewhere here in the rear end, everything should be good up front. Alright, off this comes. gonna do is I'm gonna put a well before I do anything let's pull this bulb out of here and just get a good look at it well, looks like it's got good filaments in it it's clean After further investigation, I discovered this one is dim, so there's a possibility that I put that bulb in backwards. Haha, -ha, look at that. Oh, and it's out. There's our loose connection. All right. Right now, currently, I have a piece of wood wedged in between the brake pedal and the seat, which is allowing the brake lights to come on. That's why they're on over here and here. So we got brake lights here. It looks like that was a loose connection. Let me just make sure that tail light works. And if that's good, then we can move on to the next thing. Lights on. Brake lights off. Tail lights off. Let's see how that looks. This neighborhood is obnoxious today, so I hope you guys don't mind the background music. <laughs> I always have to explain that. Why do you put background music in? Well, sometimes the neighborhood becomes a bunch of fools. And now we got a dog that's yapping across the street. People complain about that shit. But if I run some music, then you don't hear it so much. Well, then people complain about the music instead. Maybe I should just mute the video. Make the video silent. And then people will complain that I'm not describing anything. <laughs> Welcome to my world, guys. This is, this is the way it is on YouTube when you're the star. Everyone's gonna tell you how to do it. Everybody's gonna tell you how you're wrong. And everyone's gonna tell you how you suck. Anyway, good. We got tail lights. Fantastic. Oh, well, I think I've had just about enough of that dog across the street today. Of course, now that I'm talking about it, it's quiet. So that's good. Maybe we'll just stick around out here. One of the problems I'm experiencing right now is that when I crank the car by the key, the 12 volts to the coil goes to zero. So I think that the coil wire, which is the long black wire that runs through the car, is being disconnected by the key switch. So something is connected improperly. Now typically when you would crank the car, you would want the headlights to go off because you don't want the headlights to suck the battery down to prevent the car from starting. So I think the ignition coil is on that same circuit on the uh, key switch. So I'm going to have to look at that and find out exactly what's going on. Something underneath that dashboard is not hooked up properly. And that might be one of the final pieces to the puzzle to get this thing completed. Because after that, all the legal running lights uh, are ready to go. This engine does run that we are aware of. The only problem that we know is that it's not getting voltage to the coil when I crank it. The only way I could get voltage to it is by running a jumper cable from here to the coil and that gives it 12 volts and then the engine fires right up. Okay, the brakes are feeling good on this otherwise. The clutch might need an adjustment. Uh, we got oil in this thing. Um, I need to pack these up or at least get tubes on them because those are missing. And then 
Well, we can move on to the next step, and the next step is driving this thing. Yeah, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Oh, you know what else? I gotta put the gas tank in. I mean, it's like physically in place, but it doesn't have any of the tubes, hoses, wiring to the fuel sender. None of that's hooked up. That's gonna be another project. Probably take an hour or two. As long as all the parts are here, that's always the gotcha, right? We gotta make sure we have all the parts. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to probe right underneath the dashboard, and I'm going to try to find where that uh, wire is located that's hooked up improperly. In fact, I see a black wire dangling right there. I wonder what that is. Well, I'll start the investigation there. All right. I guess it's going to be it for today. A little noisy out there. But we got Kim joining us, so we'll be jumping on this thing tomorrow, and hopefully you guys will have a video of the day after. Anyway, I got most electrical sorted, but for some reason the ignition is not powering on when the key is in the start position and I think it might be a bad starter switch. I went through all the wiring on there. You see I got it gutted. I just took most of the stuff off the fuse block and just redid it. Anyway, it looks like there's no power coming back from the um, ignition switch from the black wire that's on there. It's supposed to power the coil before the headlight wire, which was very cute, was hooked to the coil wire, which so essentially headlight circuit was powering the engine. Wrong! Anyway, we're gonna deal with that. Might be an ignition switch. I can pick those up locally, not a big deal. Headlights are in, that's good. And when Kim gets over here, we'll try to get these wheel bearings sorted out because this is uh, that's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right, fun stuff coming. In between things while we're waiting for Kim, I decided to have a look to see where the speedometer cable was or should go. And to my surprise, it was dragging on the ground underneath this car. Thankfully, he didn't try to tow this thing here. Rather, it was on a trailer. But it wasn't attached. It was still inside the spindle up this way, but it was just dangling on the ground. So I have to reroute that up through the car where it's supposed to go. In addition, I found two wires underneath the fender here. And I said to myself, what are those supposed to go to? And then I had a bright light moment and said to myself, those are the horn wires. And when we hit the horn button some time ago, it made no sound. That's because there's no horn up under here. I looked through the parts bin and I found a horn made in France. Not a Bosch part, but it should make a good enough sound. It's a two wire horn, unlike a lot of the modern ones, which are single wire. Volkswagen switches ground on these things. So I checked for voltage on this. It does make voltage. So, um... Essentially, when I get this thing hooked up, it beeped, so that's good, but the button does not seem to work, so I'm going to have to trace the wire to the button for the horn and figure out what's going on with that, but otherwise, these are, well, this one, the black with the yellow stripe is a live wire anyway. Okay, we're just going to put that out of the way for the moment so it doesn't touch anything. Not that it's turned on and plugged in. I don't even think I have the battery connected at the moment. But uh, this horn needs to go under here. There's supposed to be a bracket it's supposed to attach to. The bracket is gone. So what I'm going to do... Oh, you know, it isn't gone. It's down here. That's interesting. It's not how I would have put it. I would have put it up higher. I guess it's different than what I expected. But anyway, I got the bolt and the nuts to it. So I guess we'll get that sucker attached for starters and put it in where it needs to go. You know what I'm looking here? There's no bumper brackets. That was all, I guess, patched. Somebody, you know, welded it all in. So I guess bumpers are not going back on this car. All right? Wasn't my choice. Everything is meticulously painted underneath here, though, which is really nice. I don't know what kind of uh, rust it's covering. I can see this patch here. There's three patches there overlapping each other. But uh, otherwise, everything under here looks pretty rust-free, or at least it's pretty well covered with shiny paint. The strut doesn't appear to be stock doesn't have the right uh, brake clip on it, but it's safe the way it is. He's got a zip tied on there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not the way I would have set it up. There's supposed to be a bracket that's supposed to be part of the uh, strut, but if it's an aftermarket strut, then maybe why it doesn't have one. All right, well, I'm going to pull this off. Um, quite to my surprise, I am able to turn this by hand because this is not tight. You know what? I thought this was the right Allen key for that. I guess not. Anyway, I turned the nut about 90 degrees to the left, and then it stopped. And now it doesn't want to turn at all. Anyway, the nut was loose, so whatever it's worth, this was going to be an issue. We already know that the wheel is really, really loose on the other side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that nut off, I'm going to pull the washer out, and just make sure the grease is actually packed into these bearings, and if it is, and it looks like they're good, then I'm going to put this all back together the way it's supposed to be, put the wheel back on, and call this side done. You know, I forgot to add that this side is the side with the reverse thread. And as far as I know, this is the only re reverse thread on the entire Volkswagen. And it's only found this way on air-cooled Volkswagens. Um, 
Porsche 944 is used the same nut as on a late model bus. But late model buses had a reverse thread, but the Porsche 944 had a regular thread on the side. So, I don't know, for whatever reason, Volkswagen did something different than Porsche did, even though Porsche probably designed it all anyway. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to pull out this washer. I wonder if I can get it on my fingernail. Nope, going to have to get a flathead in there. Alright, the other bearing on the other side was completely dry when I looked at it without taking it apart. But this one appears to be properly packed, so I'm just going to put that right back in there. And we're going to go with this one as is. It's pretty safe to say that the uh, one on the inside would be packed correctly also. Alright, and then comes our nut. This is reverse threaded, so lefty tighty, righty's a loosey. <laughs> These guys, this is a little hard to do because this uh, this uh, rotor is a little rusty. It's catching on the caliper, or I should say on the pads. But typically what you do is you make this finger tight, as tight as you can get it. Spin this a few times, which is a little hard for me to do because as I said, it seems to be sticking. So I'll throw the wheel on it and spin it around. And you want to back it off a twelfth of a turn. Now there's two flat sides on this. Oh no, this one's rounded. Okay, well the corner here <laughs> would indicate a sixth of a turn. So you would move the corner to about this location and that will give you where you need to. So simply loosen it back up. Wow, I guess I just cranked that one way too tight. Crank it back. A twelfth of a turn off. That's your prescribed tightness. And then of course come around here with the pinch nut and tighten that up and you're good to go. Alright, and then before you put this together you have to put your cable back in here for the speedometer. You put that end in through on the back side of the spindle and push it through as far as you can get it. All right, let's start putting this back together. Well, I did say push the cable as far as you could get it through. I did not expect that. It's actually pushing through and keeps on pushing through. So I'm gonna stop right there. Let's see, we need to put this over the end of the cable. That little square that's in there is supposed to lock into it. Come on now. What's going on here? The end of the cable will wall it out. Might be. No, maybe not. If it's in there that way, this is all Duck Man's fault. Anyway, I might need two hands. It might be my problem. Two hands and two eyes. Duck Man, you're a damn disaster. There it goes, now it's through. You know what, it's not going all the way through, why? Is the end of it broken off? Well, it looks like it's all there. Hmm, okay, I'll get that sorted out. I don't know what the deal is with it. It looks to me like the tip of it might be broken off, but I don't know if that's for true or not. Anyway, we'll get it straight. All right, we got the bearing cover on here. I put a little piece of bailing wire on the end of that. I can pull the cable back in there. I don't like this bailing wire. It's a little thin, but it should do the job. Normally, it's supposed to be a clip on here, but there's not enough meat to clip it on anymore because it looks like just a little tip of this busted off. But with a file, I was still able to make a little bit of a groove, which got the bailing wire in it, and that's typically what I use whenever a clip's missing anyway. A little piece of wire, and you're good to go. Also, a master link on some uh, bicycle chains would also fit on there. And I've seen that done on a lot of different cars. Not that I've ever done it myself, but I found cars that had that. So anyway, that might be another suitable solution if that's all you got around. Just the master link clip. Just put it on there. Anyway, this side is essentially good to go. I'm going to route the speedometer cable back up wherever the hell it goes. <laughs> it's supposed to be a hole up under there somewhere for it. I don't know where, but anyway, I'll find it. The speedometer is not front and center right here like it would typically be in a standard Beetle. It's actually behind all this firewall stuff and on the other side because stupid Beetles with the goldfish ball windshields put the speedometer in a different location because it has a dash here that's a little over a foot thick more like a modern vehicle. Some people love this. I think it's crap. No, not a fan. No, maybe if they started out this way, went to the vintage model later, I might feel different about this, but no, this, this is just crap. Over-designed, required US regulation stuff. Anyway, yeah, crap. <laughs> All right, good. Well, let's get this squared away. All right, while we're under here, we got that horn installed. So that's ready to rock and roll. 
I've got to figure out the wiring on it. And again, I don't know where the hell that spinometer cable goes. It goes up under here somewhere. There's typically a hole up underneath the fender here. Or quarter panel, I should say, but usually it's right about here. But this is a stupid beetle with a goldfish ball windshield. <laughs> All right, well, we'll figure it out. As it turns out, I had to pull that cable back out because it runs through a small slot here. And the big end that screws on the back of the speedometer was not going to fit through that hole, nor the hole that's underneath the dashboard that's right there. And it might have fit through that one, but certainly not the other one. Anyway, it screwed into the back of the speedometer up underneath there. The, the dash cluster came out relatively easily. There's four screws on it. And most of them weren't even threaded in. It's like the threads on them were wallowed out. So only two screws are seeming to hold the dash in at all. Anyway, that is now in place. Speedometer cable should be effective. Oh, I almost forgot. The cable goes through that slot and it goes under the gas tank. And you can see it right there, that's the cable. It goes in this hole, then there's another hole and another panel underneath there that's only for the speedometer cable. Somebody ran a wiring harness through it. Um, you have to say, speedometer cable wouldn't go through that hole. But the cable is long enough that I could route it around the hole and it doesn't seem to be hitting the steering box or any of the steering mechanism, so I think it's gonna be okay. So anyway, it's routed around, looks good to go. This side effectively is finished. We can put the wheel back on, turn this thing back straight. Make it a little easier for me to get to everything on there. Here we go, look at that. Fantastic. Okay, good. We'll go back on. Then we have to attack the other side. But the other side is easy. No speedometer cables or any of that extra crap. So anyway, here we go. Oh, damn it. My rolly cart's on the edge of my driveway. <laughs> All right, here we go. One wheel, these lug bolts were all loose earlier, just like they were on the rear. Now they're gonna be properly tightened down. Right now I'm just gonna impact them on, get them started. And then later, where's all the holes at? There's one. And then later, I'll, before I drive it, I'll go around and I'll torque everything down at the same time. I actually torque my lug bolts on. A lot of people don't do that. Some people I know that worked in the uh, tire chain shops and brake chain shops all say the same thing. You get the guy that goes in there with the ugga dugga and he cranks the living things, cranks the living dog shit out of these things. Then somebody comes around with a torque wrench and goes tick, 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 yeah, it's tight. Just tick, tick, not even tightening them. Don't even know if they're over tightened and chances are they probably are. But one of my friends that worked for a tire change place, he said that uh, he was using the Ugga Dugga and he got him just snugged. And uh, his boss yelled at him because his boss didn't want to actually tighten the bolts. He just wanted to see that the, <laughs> the torque wrench was clicking, indicating that they were as tight or tighter than specification. <laughs> Needless to say, the reason why I haven't a bolt uh, lug nut specifically on my 350Z that's right behind us here that won't come off not only is it a lock which I don't have the key for but somebody over torqued it so yeah I had a key that I made custom that's how I took off my wheel locks in the rear and they came off fine because I torqued them on but the fronts were torqued on by professionals that changed my tires and needless to say they fucking borked them thanks guys Every time I have somebody do something for me, they usually overbill me and they f*** something up. Every single time. This is one of the reasons why I learn how to do things and I do them myself. If something breaks, hey, it's my fault. But every single time somebody f*** me over. Anyway. <laughs> I digress. This wheel is on. This side is effectively done. Let's go on over to the other side and see if we can get that finished. And if you noticed, yeah, our lovely and beautiful Kim hasn't shown yet. I don't know where the hell she is. Anyway. I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe she'll show up when I'm midway. But that was supposed to be her project. Yeah, remember I said something about people never showing up when I need them? People just don't come around. Everybody always asks, hey, Duckman, why isn't such and such on the video? Well, it's because they didn't show up. Endlessly the problem of my life. Another reason why I do things always myself, why I don't ask for help and why I don't need other people's assistance, because they don't show. Nobody comes around. Now, I'm not mad at or bad-mouthing any one person, but typically, whenever I'm in need, nobody wants to help. 
<laughs> Story of my life. So, get that idea out of your head right now if you think I'm talking badly about somebody because there's no one person. This is an everybody thing. Nobody's ready when I need assistance. You know what? I'll call out one person. One person that's always been there for me every time I needed help was Wild Bill. Every time I needed him, I had a breakdown with Ruby once, and actually it was just a weak battery, and it wasn't able to push starter, it just it was being a little bit of a prick. But anyway, he, uh, he was there to show up, and when my axle CV joint bolts broke, he was there. Thankfully, he was never very far from home, and he was always available, but he was always there for me when I needed him, so shouts out to Wild Bill. Maybe he'll get his YouTube together sometime soon. Anyway, let's put some air in this tire so I can actually get the jack up underneath this thing. This tire's getting a little squishy sitting here this long. Links down below in the video description if you want one of those compressors. These things are fantastic. I've been talking about these things for the last couple years and man, I just love this tool. I use it all the time. I don't have to drag my compressor hoses out here. I don't have to wait for the compressor tank to fill up. This little tool is super dependable and it's always ready for me when I need it. As long as I keep it charged, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I could probably fill about a dozen tires or more and still have enough battery juice left to be able to jump start a car with it. Well, anyway, eight and a half foot pounds. I want to put as much in there as possible because I need to get it high enough I can get the jack underneath it. And when that tire gets a little low, the jack doesn't fit under there. I don't know if he lowered the front end, but I think he did, maybe just a little bit. All right, well, here we go. You probably remember all these lug nuts were loose on here. Oh yeah, it's still loose here too. Oh yeah. I hope he wasn't planning to drive it like Okay. Guess I can detach this. I'll put a jack underneath it. Get this thing lifted up enough. I can get this wheel off. Alright, well, let's come back here. People tell me all the time, I'm unsubscribing from you because you gripe too much. Well, you know what? There's some YouTube channels, that's all they do is gripe. I actually get something done around here. I don't just stand around complaining all day long. Because when nobody else does what they're supposed to do, guess what I'm doing? Yeah, filling in for everybody else. Story of my life. I'm. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was really loose. <laughs> I could probably get even more out of it than that, but I got more than a quarter turn on it, and I can still go more. Way more. Yeah, it'll go a lot further than that. Okay, it's definitely part of the problem. I'm going to pull the bearing out, I'm going to look for the grease and stuff on the inside of it, and see if there's uh, anything that needs to be addressed on the back side. Of course, now, now I've tightened it too much. I need to put a wrench on to loosen it up. No, that's life for you, right? <laughs> yeah. Brought a wrench. I was able to turn it. Didn't matter. So I got about a half a turn out of it from where it was. That was definitely, definitely an issue. Alright, let's spin this pinch nut off of here. Pull this washer out from behind it. This bearing looks kind of dry. And you know what? Now that I pulled the washer out, I'm seeing a bunch of grease. Looks like just the outside was dry. But this bearing looks good and packed, and uh, I think we're good to go. Yeah, we're packed. There's enough grease in there. Okay, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to put a little dollop on the outside of it where it looked like it uh, wasn't greased. But it's nice to get these nuts, pinch nuts, covered in some grease and get them just, just a layer on them. Because if moisture does get in here, it'll stop it from rusting out, which makes it a lot easier for the next guy to get apart. <laughs> That's right, I'm always looking out for the next guy. Anyways, this is ready to go back on here with a little bit of grease. So, let's take care of that. Yeah. Okay, I did the same thing on the other side, but you guys didn't get to see that because I skipped a step in the recording process. When it comes to putting these bearings together, you really can't have too much grease in it. Unless it uh, comes out and goes all over the place. Of course, don't get it on your rotors. <laughs> Put this nut back on here. Now this side's gonna be the easy side, like I said, because there's no speedometer cable. I don't have to deal with the horn nonsense. And looking underneath the fender, I can see, once again, where the bumper bracket used to be. Somebody cut it off. Looks like the rust is holding this caliper, too, so. Really not going to be able to uh, 
Well, the rust on the disc, rather, is being pulled back by the caliper. I guess I could take this off and sand it down, but that wasn't part of the, the job here. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll just snug this up real fast and then back it up just a little bit. This helps the bearings to seat. Yeah, look at how much more of a turn I got on it. Just from the bearing seating. All right, here we go. All right, remember, finger tighten it as much as it'll go. And then 12th of a turn, loosen. That's all. Just like that. Tighten the pinch nut back down. The pinch bolt, I should say. Here we go. All right, that looks good. Still hear a noise underneath there, but you know what? That's not the uh oh no. That's not bearings. I think that's a tie rod problem. No, you know what? The strut's not tight. There's two bolts here on the bottom of the strut. They're not tight. I can actually see the strut where it pinches. The uh, spindle comes up like this. There's two bolts go through it, and the strut wraps around it, and the bolts go through it all. And I couldn't show you, even if I wanted to. Bad angle, and the lighting underneath is very poor. And that car is not a shitbox Toyota. <laughs> all right, well, a dollop of grease. Cover this sucker up. Again, recommended this highly. Do not, do not not grease this. The double negative, deliberately. A block of wood will help you to tap this on if you're worried about denting it. Usually it doesn't take much to get it on there and seated. I'm using the flat side of the hammer on purpose because it will not dent quite as easily. Yeah, it's on there. All right, good. Definitely need to tighten that up, though. That's no good. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be fixed. Put that back together. All right. That knock underneath here is fixed. So it was a combination of two things. It was the lower strut was loose, and the bearings were not at all near where they needed to be. We're good on this side. We can now put this wheel back on. Wherever the hell it went. <laughs> here it is. Get this sucker back on here. This was the side I was going to have him take care of while I was stressing on doing the other side with all the extra crap that was on it. But, working alone today, doing the usual duck man thing. <laughs> You know, my dad used to have a saying, and I've repeated it too. When it comes to getting things done, if you show, you show. If you don't, you blow. You know, I used to have an office, and I used to have employees. I used to do computer repairs. Most of my customers would typically come in between 9 and 10. So I would tell my technicians, rather than have them waste a trip all the way over to the office, was to call me to make sure I had work. But if you're gonna call me, call me before 11, because if you don't call me by 11, then I'm gonna get started on the work and I'm gonna do it myself because these customers aren't gonna be waiting. It needs to be started immediately. Well, these guys would do the same thing every single time. They would call me at three o'clock in the afternoon and ask if there was any work. And at three o'clock in the afternoon, not only was there no work because it's all finished, <laughs> I got absolutely nothing for them until the next day. So unless, unless I had way too much to finish myself, you know, I, again, they wouldn't call me until 3 o'clock the next day, so the entire week they get no paycheck because they don't come in when they're supposed to. And then they'd randomly show up at 9 a.m. one day and just start working, which is great because when the customers come in, if they take care of the customers right away, they start getting paid right away. But anyway, I don't know, I couldn't understand them. Most of them, they 
never even got a chance to fire them. They just they they, they were wanderers. Just one day they stopped calling, kind of thing. And you wonder if they got another job. And you start talking to their friends, and you find out if they're just kind of sitting around playing video games all day that they just gave up on life. That happened to a lot of my people. <laughs> but anyway, I used to be a video gamer myself. I understand what it's like, but I also grew out of it at some point. What am I hearing? Crunchy, crunchy. Tire rubbing on something? Ooh, my tire's really close to that strut. I think some of the lettering on the tire is catching that strut. I think that's what it is. If not, I'll recheck the bearings. It's real easy to just pull that cap off without even taking the wheel off. But anyway, I think we're just about finished on this side. So I'm going to pick up and put some tools away. And we'll be back to jump onto the next thing in just a minute. Alright. i got to put this tank back in here. I don't like stupid beetle tanks. They're goofy. Things fit very differently than a standard beetle. I should have put the sender in it while it was up and out. But I'm going to do that right now. Ah, I get in there. There, we got the sender in there. The tank is in position. I guess that about finishes us for today on the old stupid beetle. Can't wait till this thing is gone. <laughs> Might only be another video or two of it. I think that's all we got left. Well, that sums up this video for today. This 1974 Goldfish Bowl Stupid Beetle is coming along and doesn't have a whole heck of a lot left. I need to finish up the uh, gas tank fuel line installation. I still have to figure out why we have no power to the coil, which I believe is due to the uh, ignition switch, or key switch, essentially. So I'll get that sorted out. But otherwise, front wheels are situated. No more loose bearings nonsense. All the lights are working. Went through all that stuff. I got to put one of the uh, seats back in where it belongs. I only asked for two, but he delivered it with, or uh, I only asked for the driver's side rather, but he delivered it with two. A Little bit of a pain in the butt. In fact, that driver's seat is on the wrong side. You can tell by the little pull knobby. It's supposed to be on the other side. No big deal. This is the dash car that was given to me here. Put that back on so it doesn't get any more crushed than it already is. But like I said, we're just about wrapped up on this thing. So anyways, you know the deal, guys. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. You'll also find Kim's GoFundMe up there. She's still looking for some money to put together her breedle. Even though she's not here, I'm still going to do the right thing, and I'm still going to promote her. Hopefully, she'll be back in some future videos. She sent me some text messages. I don't know what the deal is, but, uh, yeah, she's hours late, and now I'm getting messages that she's not coming, which really isn't doing very good anyway because it's dark out. Although my work light is incredibly convenient, thanks to Hyperlight for that one. My lens is really dirty. It's not just dirty either, it's really chipped. It's been hit by an awful lot of uh, <laughs> metal shards when using a grinder, which chipped the ever-loving dog shit out of the thing. Anyway, yeah, come along. We're not too far away from getting this thing finished. I need to get the gas filler. I don't know where that's at. I hope I can find it. Because if he doesn't find it, then well, he doesn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.